So I got the question earlier this week, Akil, are the VAT patterns outperforming the cipher patterns? And well, at the time I, I didn't have an answer, but I crunched my numbers, went through my stats, and well, I think you'll be surprised with the results. Okay, gang, welcome back to this week's weekend review. I'm your host, Akil Stokes, head Forex trader at Trade Empowered. And well, we've got a jam packed episode this week because, well, it's the end of the month. Uh, so at the end of the month, I always like to crunch the numbers, go through the stats and see if I can notice any trends. And well, this this month was a surprisingly a good month. I really haven't been paying attention. There's been a lot of other stuff going around and well, it, it seemed like a down month, but I just finished up the numbers and, well, we ended pretty good. Now, compared to the, the heater or the hot streak that we've been on, the stats aren't going to look as good. You know, we finished with a win percentage of 60% this month instead of the 70s, which we've been at for the last uh, three. Instead of returning double digits, we're back to our normal 3% return uh, on investment, which is good. That's what I like to average each month. I like to have a, a nice consistent pattern of 3%. That's fine with me. But again, compared to the last three months, that's pretty down, but Hey, hot streaks aren't going to last forever. And again, as long as we're conserving capital, as long as we're avoiding that drawdown, I am quite fine with that. Now, the question I addressed in the little tease before this video started was about the cipher pattern. Uh, was the bat pattern or what was performing better this month or uh, just recently the, the trader asked the cipher pattern or the bat pattern and well I crunched my numbers and I have some results from the live room this week of course I'll I'll include a more detailed version in the written review which is either right under this YouTube post in the about section or if you're on the trade empowered website uh, it should be right under this video but my answer is a cipher pattern and surprisingly we actually were 100%, that's 100%, 100% win percentage or win completion rate on the cipher pattern this month in the live room, which means we didn't lose a single one. Now, year to date, that puts us at about 70% overall year to date, which is a little down from the higher time frames, and that's for various reasons. Mainly, there are some cipher patterns on the lower time frames that I just don't take just because, well, we're, they're not that profitable, and that goes for any trade. If I can't get at least 10 pips to target one out of it, it's not really worth my time. Uh, so that has something to do with the win percentage, but 70%, that's still pretty darn good, and uh, that's the, the highest percentage of out, out of all of the patterns I trade in the live room, uh, so which is pretty cool. Let's see what else, uh, if I can remember. I have my little cheat sheet over here. Talked about the cipher pattern on a good note. On a side note, uh, the Gartley pattern, not so much. We've been going back and forth with the Gartley all year and, well, only 25% this last month. So we're, we're back down in the dumps on the Gartley pattern, but we had a nice run. We had a pretty good high streak with the Gartley pattern. Um, other than that, mentioned it was a positive month, about 60% or not, about 60% uh, for our RIN percentage and about 3% on ROI, return on investment. So enough said. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's take a look at uh, the two sessions we had in the live room this week and don't leave because when we get back, I'm going to talk about two things. I'm going to talk about risk reward because I've been getting a lot of questions about that and I want to clear up something. And at the same time, I want to show you guys how to determine if your trading strategy is profitable. Uh, so let's take a flashback to the live room and I'll be right back in a few minutes. Very busy day in the live room this Tuesday. I guess the market knew that we'd only be running things for two days this week and wanted to give us as much action as possible before we close out our month. Uh, let me run through a few of these trades. Let me check on New Zealand dollar real quick to make sure we didn't indeed get those targets hit. All right, 81.94, very, very close. Maybe we'll get them by the time I'm done recording this. But we had a cipher pattern here in New Zealand dollar. Actually, before I get into that, we did have our one losing trade came on New Zealand dollar. Uh, we took a, a double, I took a double bottom right down here. We had some DSRs drawn in, but basically it was at a test of the B leg of our cipher pattern. If I zoom out, you'll see the entire cipher. Let's get these orders off of here. If I zoom out, you'll see the, the entire cipher pattern. We came down to our B leg and you can see we had trouble breaking it. 
We had the RSI oversold. We had RSI diversions. We had a CTS score of about five. Now, that isn't the highest CTS score, but good enough for us to take. So I set up a trade that had a very good risk reward. We had very short stops on there, about 18 pips, and we had a pretty good, uh, pretty good level to both our targets one and target twos. As you can see, the market broke through that level, causing us to get stopped out, but didn't let that get to us. We fired right back, putting our orders for the cipher pattern down here at 81.54. And as you can see, it's looking like we'll probably get target ones hit up there as the market looks to push towards this uh, 82 even handle, which is a very psychological number. So we, we talk about risk reward all the time. And well, basically, this if we get target one hit on this trade, this is going to make up for the entire loss, the entire two position loss of our trade previous. Um, we had a cipher pattern on pound yen as well. You can see here in green. Let's get rid of the blue one. We had an X to A, A to B, B to C. C to D happened during a news event, spiked up, came back down, got our target ones hit, and then stopped me out for break even on the remainder of my trail, uh, my trail stop. So only one target profit hit on that trade. And lastly, our big winner for today is going to be the pound dollar trade. We had a Gartley pattern here completing down at 61.48. And this trade put us through a lot of pain. Now, we can see we measured out a stop zone. We had a 1 ATR stop right here at 61.39. We had a 2 ATR stop down here at 61.32. And we really did our work with deciding where to put our stop loss at, especially with this structure level right here. This is the one that really concerned me. Um, obviously, the one below it concerned me too, but that was just too far away to get my stops. But my my ATR stop base rules allowed me to have my stops below this structure level. So I participated and I indeed got my stops below that structure level. And it looks like that kept me into the trade. So this was a, a very, very good trade because it, it works on the psychology. The traders not only had to enter this trade, but we had to deal with this. We entered this basically right on the open of our room. And we had to deal with this being basically in the red from 8.30 to 9.50. So about an hour and 20 minutes in the red, which is a lot for a day trade. Luckily, patience, discipline, determination paid off. And well, you guys can see what happened. We spiked all the way up, hitting target ones at our 6.18 and then hitting, hitting target twos at a retest of our structure. And then a few of our traders are actually shooting for extended target twos, zooming out the chart, looking for... Uh, Looking for a, a, a bigger potential bat pattern here. You have to go out to a 60 minute chart to see this, but looking for a bigger bat pattern here. So, a good trading day overall. We had three trades. We had uh, two winners. We had four trades. We had two winners. We had uh, one loser, and we have one still in progress right now, which is hopefully we get there and hit target one. So, all in all, a good day and a great way to start the week. Not too busy of a day here on Wednesday, our last trading day of the week. We took two trades, as you can see. The one I want to talk about is pound dollar. Uh, this was a CTS-based trade. Let's get this off of here. This was a CTS-based trade where we we really built a built a case for entry. We started off with an ABCD pattern, as you can see. Um, but we also had a few things involved as well. So if we're going through our CTS score, combined technical score, the ABCD pattern is going to give us two points. We also knew that on our higher time frame, if we go out to a daily chart on pound here on the cable, go out to a daily chart, we're we're right in between a structure level. Let's zoom all the way back to, what is it, 2009? All the way back to this level right here, actually to uh, the beginning of 2013, December, end of 2012. We're right in between a structure level. We have our the highs of one of our wicks right here at about 63 flat. We have our highest high right here as well at 63.69. So we're right in that zone, uh, which gave us our higher time frame confirmation that we do indeed have structure. So we have our ABCD pattern, which is two points. We have major structure, which is another two points. That's four points. You can see we have some Fibonacci confluence up here. We have a 1414 Fibonacci extension taken from our A to our B leg and back down. We also have a 1618 Fibonacci inversion taken from our C leg to our B leg and back down. And again, these, you know, the ABCD pattern and the fibs don't have to be right on, you know, right on the mark. We're, we're more, more so looking for a zone. Uh, so again, we have ABCD pattern that's two points, major structure that's four points, Fibonacci confluence that's five points, 
higher time frame confirmation. You saw we just went to the daily chart. That's six points. Going back down to our 15, we have the RSI overbought. That's going to be seven points. We have a retracement and a retest, which is going to be eight points. We have RSI divergence. You can see the market giving us basically equal highs here. RSI giving us lower highs. That's going to be nine points, giving us all we need for our CTS base score. So simply, it's just an ABCD pattern with a double top, but building that system, uh, you know, building that score set allows us to enter only the best trading opportunities. We had a, a very good conversation about this in the live room as we talked about taking aggressive C's for ciphers. And for you guys that know me, that's a really it's a, it's a hot topic issue for me. I, I really gets me fired up because I think it's, it's I think it's just flat out wrong. I know it's just flat out wrong, um, but it, it sparked a very good discussion explaining why you shouldn't do that. But also talking about as a trader, do we want to put our money, our hard earned money at stake for just any opportunity or do we only want to look for the best of the best? And I, you know, I, I took it uh, to gambling. You know, I, Jason brought this up in his, I think it's Forex Market Preview the other day where he said that, you know, when he went to Vegas, made some money playing poker and said that he only he only plays his hand when he has won the top three hands. So, you know, if not, he folds. Basically, what he's saying is if he doesn't have one of the highest percentages of winning, he's not going to add in extra money in hopes that he maybe could win. No. He only wants to put his hard-earned money at stake when he knows he has the best chance of winning in the market and or in the on the poker game. And it's no different in the market. We only want to put our hard-earned money at stake when we have the best of the best opportunities. And well, that CTS score is a good way to determine that because, well, the higher the score you get, and this is a nine out of possibly 13, at least on my scoring system, uh, the higher the score you get, the better the opportunity it is. And that could be the difference between either taking a trade or not taking a trade, or if you're more advanced uh, along your trading journey, that could be the difference between trading a full position, trading half position, maybe doubling your position, you know, stuff like that as well. Uh, so that's it for this week, guys. Uh, in the live room, two days. I, I not sure if this is going to be a profitable trade yet, but we're on our way. Hopefully we push down uh, to get our target ones hit. That'll be a pretty good move, about uh, probably about 70 pips in there, which which would be pretty pretty good way to end our month. So we'll sit back, keep the fingers crossed, and hopefully Pound can keep uh, retracing off of the big uh, GDP news it had during the London session. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about risk reward. And I, I get a lot of traders asking about, well, how does the one to one work? Uh, if you're trading multiple positions, you know, one to one to target one shouldn't really matter. And I want to make this clear. So make sure you listen if you have any questions. Risk reward is based off your entire portfolio and it's based off your trading as a whole. What you want to do is you want to make sure that your average win is covering your average loss, unless you're a very high percentage uh, uh, trader. And by I mean that, if you're trading one target, then that means, well, your target ones need to be further away than your stops. You need to be able to make more on your first target than what you'll lose if you get stopped out, if you're only trading one target, if you're only trading, say, one position. Now, the way I trade, I split my position. So I trade a two position contract, so two contracts. I trade a target one and a target two. Now. Due to my back testing, and again, back testing, you got to put in the work to get these numbers. I pretty much know what percentage of the time my target one's going to get hit. I know what percentage of the time my target two is going to get hit. When I look for risk reward, we're looking at a total of that full position because, after all, when we lose, we're lo we're not losing half a position. When we lose, we're losing the entire thing, right? So when I win, I want to take the average of my target one and target two and make sure that average is more than my average loss. So we'll, we'll, we'll take an example of this. This, this, uh, this month in the live room, we lost about, and this is on a, a total positions target, uh, contract one and contract two, we lost 306 pips, okay? And that's over eight trades. We had eight losing trades for 306 pips. So that's about an average of minus 38 pips per trade. With our wins, we had a total of 483 pips on wins, and that goes for both target one and target two. That's combining both of them. So not just target one, not just target two, both of them together. 
483 pips, and that's over 12 wins for an average of about, it's a little more, but about 40 pips per trade. So you can see that my average win is 40. My average loss is 38. Therefore, it should be pretty obvious, my average win is more than my average loss. So with that being said, that's, that's the expectancy of my system or of the way I trade. Now, the key, the last bit you want to add to that is your win percentage. You know, if you average 40 pips per win, you average 38 per loss, then what? Right? If you're a 50% trader, boom, you should make profit. If you're a 40% trader, you'll probably be in drawdown with those stats. However, again, we were about 60%. So not only are our wins higher than our losses in this case, and this was a pretty average month, a pretty uh, you know, back and forth month, not only are our wins greater than our losses, but our win percentage, 60, is much higher than our losing percentage, 40. Boom, right there. When you add all that together, average win minus average loss, and then you times that by your, uh, you know, by your win and your loss percentage, if that number is higher than one, you have a positive system. OK, so it goes into your back testing. You've got to get that testing done so you have the numbers so it makes sense. You can't just pull them out of the sky and say, well, I read somewhere that the Gartleys are about 70 percent to, to this and this and this. you got to do the work for yourself. And you really can't get that answer until you have the stats and you can crunch the numbers. So I hope that gives you a little insight into risk reward. Um, again, it's a big topic that I don't like to get into too much because it, it it gets confusing unless we really have time to sit down and talk about it. But that's a quick way to determine if your strategy is indeed profitable and really what, what percentage of the time you would need to win to be a profitable trader. So thank you for joining me for this week's weekend review. As always, like the page, share the page, subscribe. I'm still trying to get to 2,000 subscriptions by uh, December. It's looking pretty grim, but I'm not going to give up. Uh, so help me out. Please uh, encourage friends and families to subscribe. And of course, leave comments. You guys know I love reading the comments. I try to respond to as much of them as possible. I think I do a rather good job of that. Uh, so keep them coming. And of course, anything that I can do to make this video better, anything that I can do to uh, answer your questions, I will. I did get a question about impulse legs. Um, I'm running out of time right now in the video, but I promise I'll try to address that maybe in maybe I'll do a video Monday or something like that okay so until next time traders have a happy Thanksgiving um, plan your trade trade your plan I'm gonna get back to painting the new house as you can see uh, I'm bundled up the heat is off uh, this is probably the last room that uh, isn't dirty and messed up so hopefully we can get this move done by the time the football game's on tomorrow so until next time, take care, guys. I'll see you. This, this is my legacy, legacy.